Hey, send the light, send the light, and a golden offering at the cross we lay. Send the light, send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine for. Shake someone's hand this evening. Amen. As we find our seats again, page 122 in your songbooks, if you need the words, sing it out with me on the third verse. Let us pray that grace may everywhere abound. Send the light, send the light, and a Christ-like spirit everywhere be found. Send the light, send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let shine from shore to shore send the light the blessed gospel light let it shine forevermore on the last let us not grow weary in the work of love send the light send the light let us gather jewels for a crown above send the light send the light send the light the blessed gospel light let it shine from shore to shore send the light the blessed gospel light let it shine Welcome back to Missions Conference, night number two. We had a great service last night, and appreciate you being out. This had a great Thursday night crowd, and uh, so thank you for coming, for being a part of things, and we are looking forward to what God has for us here this evening. Uh, of course, as a church family, uh, it's a bittersweet moment for us. Brother Earl Held went home to be with the Lord uh, last night about 1140, and uh, his faith has become sight, and he is... Uh, if you will, he is where he was meant to be, and uh, so please be praying for uh, his family. Uh, I know they've got uh, folks coming in from the West Coast, from the Gulf Coast, and, and kind of all points in between over the next few days. Uh, funeral services will be here next Wednesday. Uh, they'll be viewing from 10 to 11 Wednesday morning, then the service at 11, and I realize that's during the day, during the week, uh, but uh, please be praying for them and, and uh, pray that uh, those that maybe that come in that don't know the Lord will hear the gospel and have an opportunity to know Christ as Savior. Uh, I also uh, learned last night, uh, Odessa Fair took a fall on Sunday, and uh, I believe she fractured her pelvis. And uh, she's at Hartford Hospital, so if you would pray for Odessa, please, uh, one of our older ladies, and I'm, I'm sure she would appreciate that. And as always, how many are here tonight, and you're carrying a burden, and you stand in need of prayer? Is anybody like that? Just glance around, take that in, and, and be reminded to pray one for another. And let's do that this evening. Father, we come to you tonight in Jesus' name, and we thank you that we can. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for a beautiful day. Thank you for heaven, that hope of eternal life that we have through Christ. And Lord, we sorrow 
when a loved one passes away, but we don't sorrow like the world does, those that have no hope. Thank you for Brother Held, for his testimony, for his influence, for his family. And uh, Lord, we don't need to pray for him anymore. He is, he is uh, well. He is well in every way. But we do pray for his uh, dear family and ask your strength and comfort to rest upon them. For every need that's represented by every person in this room, would you please draw close to every life and minister to them as they have, have need of. Lord, we thank you that we can come tonight be reminded of the work of the Great Commission, meet some missionaries that have been called and have answered the call to go to a place to preach the gospel. Would you settle on this service in great power? Would you settle our hearts? Help us to be still, to know that you are God. Help us to lay aside everything that troubles us, everything that would distract us and Lord, I pray that the uh, Holy Spirit would have liberty to speak to us. Bless Brother Deaton as he talks to us about Switzerland and the need there, the burden there, the call you've placed upon he and his family. Bless Brother Morrison, he comes to preach in a little while and, and uh, use him to speak to our hearts. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us to listen. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. And we'll thank you for all that you do. We'll give you the praise and the honor for all of it. We ask for it tonight in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Again, thank you for coming. And I know on a Thursday night, we're not normally here, so you made special effort to get here and be a part of it. Uh, tonight, uh, we have uh, missionary Chris Deaton uh, is with us. And I've heard a lot about him over the years. Just got to meet him yesterday for the very first time. Uh, he and his family are headed to the uh, country of Switzerland. Brother Dean, if you want to come up, he's going to just uh, greet you for a moment, uh, share maybe a little bit of testimony and so forth. He's got a video presentation, and then he'll come back up uh, and uh, uh, just uh, close out his portion of things tonight. And this is where we get to understand the man and the mission that God's called them to. On Saturday evening at our international banquet, uh, we're going to have an opportunity at that time to ask questions of each of our missionaries. And, and uh, so just kind of it maybe something will come to mind tonight and you want to know something about Switzerland or whatever. Uh, just make a mental note or write. I don't make a lot of mental notes. They get lost somewhere. Uh, I have to write it down. And uh, so we'll give you an opportunity to ask some questions. Brother Deaton, thank you for coming all the way here to be a part of our service. And uh, God bless you, my yes, friend. Sir. Thank you so much, Pastor. Heritage Baptist Church, thank you so much for just allowing me and my family to come present the burden that God has called us to in Switzerland. Now, I see several faces that are new tonight, so I do want to reintroduce my family real quick. My wife, Miss Ebony, if you'll stand up, she's here in the center. We've been married 13 wonderful years. Uh, the Lord has blessed us with four children. Aubrey is the oldest. Uh, she's 11. And then we have Gunner, Titus. And then Emmett, he's the youngest at five, so between 11 and five years old, you may sit down, Emmett. Uh, he loves the attention. So, uh, But, no, the Lord has blessed us with four wonderful children, and uh, we thank him for it. Uh, once again, we are the Deaton family, and we are called to the country of Switzerland. Uh, now, I do just absolutely uh, am honored and appreciate the opportunity to share this, this calling that the Lord has given us, but it always makes me nervous to go first. Uh, this has been a first of many. Yes, yeah, see, brother back there, he's the same way. Uh, I, 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 it just always makes me nervous going first, and uh, this has been a first for me in the fact that yesterday I played the first music special at the conference. Yeah, if you were here, yeah, you got to hear it. If you weren't, you missed out. We're not doing it again. Uh, <laughs> And then Pastor had me come up and introduce my family first. And uh, I'm like, man, I hate going first. And now tonight he said, you're going first. I said, great. I'm excited. Uh, but, no, I definitely appreciate the opportunity. So our video doesn't change. Every church we go to, we show the same video. The introduction that I give to the church does kind of change from church to church. Now, I've prayed to the Lord to just show me uh, how I can introduce our video to you. And, uh, and, and last night, he kind of gave me clarity. He did give me clarity on how he'd want me to present the video to begin with. And uh, I want to start off by asking a question. Who heard the train last night when Brother Robbie Morrison was preaching? So if you look around, you'll see about 
30% of the hands went up. Now, the ones that weren't here, obviously you didn't hear it because you weren't here. But if you were here, you probably blocked it out. You say, Brother Chris, what does a train have to do with Switzerland? Well, I just want to draw the conclusion that um, when it came to the train noise, some of us blocked it out because you may be like me and you're used to the train. Now, our family in Kentucky, our house, had to be as legally close to the tracks as possible. It was about 15 meters. Michael seen it. It's no joke. Right on the tracks. So me and my family have developed this unique ability to just drown it out. Many of you may be the same way. You've heard the train so much here that you've drowned it out. Now, last night when Brother Morrison was preaching and I heard that train, it just got me thinking Man, the country of Switzerland is such rooted in religion. They've had it for hundreds and hundreds of years, and they've got to the point they have the train mentality. You said, what's the train mentality? It's where they're so used to hearing it that they have drowned it out. I say that because, church, I want to encourage you that this is a good Bible-preaching, teaching church, and don't ever get to the point to where we treat it like the train. Don't ever get to the point that we drowned out the truth because we're so used to hearing it. Now, as we get ready to start the video, I just want to encourage you. As you pray for us, pray the Lord that we'll provide our support quickly. Pray the Lord will get us to Switzerland quickly so that way they don't have to hear that same religious train that they've heard for the last hundreds and hundreds of years. We want to teach the truth of Jesus Christ. Pray that we can get there quickly. The video will give you some information about Switzerland. And once again, church, I do thank you so much for allowing us to come and share our burden. If you'll play the video. Switzerland is a place of beauty. Known for its breathtaking Alps, exceptional standard of living, picturesque scenery, stable economy, and rich history, Zurich is the financial capital of the world, and Geneva, a global picture of neutrality. Everything seems perfect. Therein lies the problem. It's easy to overlook the spiritual darkness underlying the godlessness of the people in this utopia-sounding country. Jesus taught again and again that man sees the physical, but we must look past the facade and ask ourselves, what does God see? Matthew chapter 23, verse 27 and 28, Jesus said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones, and of all uncleanness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Switzerland has a long religious history dating back centuries to the Reformation. It was during this time in 1527 that Felix Mons abandoned Catholic religion for a personal relationship with Jesus. The Zurich City Council found him guilty of baptizing adults and he was sentenced to be drowned in the Lamont River in Zurich. After being handed the death penalty, he wrote, Already, before my end has come, that I have eternal joy with him and should love him in all his righteousness, which exist here, and which shall endure forever hereafter. Hence so many who do not have this in truth are deceived by a vain opinion. Felix looked past the physical. He recognized the spiritual darkness, and he knew that true light was the only way. I'm Chris Deaton. Born in Detroit, Michigan, but raised in eastern Kentucky. In high school, I was invited to a small independent Baptist church in Monticello, Kentucky. At the age of 17, I surrendered my life to Christ and trusted Him as my Savior. Several weeks later, I was baptized, and shortly after, off to the army I went. 
After returning from a combat deployment in Afghanistan with the 101st Airborne Division, my wife and I got married and plugged in to serve at Greater Cumberland Baptist Church. With the heart of a servant, God began to burden us to do more. I always had a desire to serve in a full-time capacity, but how? In my early 20s, I surrendered to preach and patiently waited for Him to give direction. As we were waiting, God continued to grow in us a desire to do more and to serve Him. And as Paul wrote in 1 Timothy chapter 1, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me, for he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Patience and faithfulness led to a calling, and at our annual missions conference in 2022, God put me into the ministry. It was a Sunday morning service that we surrendered to the mission field, and God gave direction. God has called us to the dock region of Switzerland to spread the true light of Jesus. Switzerland has four nationally recognized languages, Swiss German, Italian, French, and Romansh. With a population of 8.8 .8 million people, 35% claim Roman Catholicism, 24% Reformed Protestant, and over 30% Atheism. The dark spiritual depression that religion brings can be seen in half the population and the other half see no need for God when they have everything the world has to offer. We desire to bear witness of the true light that brings everlasting joy that can only be found in having a personal relationship with Jesus. I have served our country and now I desire to spend my life in service to the King. Missionary J.K. Falconer said, I have but one candle of life to burn, and I would rather burn it in a land filled with darkness than a land flooded with light. Switzerland has pockets of light, and with one missionary from the Netherlands and 8.8 .8 million people, there is still much work to be done. I am humbly asking that you partner with us in taking the true light to the darkest depths of the dark region of Switzerland. I am excited to hear Brother Robbie tonight again. But people always ask, why Switzerland? Why Switzerland? Uh, like the video said, right now there's currently zero missionaries from America that we know of. We've searched for over a year. There's one missionary from the Netherlands. I've not met him in person, but I've spoke to him over the phone. All that to say, when we surrendered to the mission field, the first question everybody asked was, where? 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 Where are you going? Where are you going? And we wanted to know immediately, but that wasn't God's plan. He said patience. Now, I'm sure you guys do a lot better with patience than I do, but we had to patiently wait. And we waited and we waited and we waited and we prayed that the Lord would give us clarity and give us direction. And he did with Switzerland. Now, I'll tell you this quick story. When we called missionaries just all around the world, because we wanted to go somewhere where the gospel was needed. I talked to one missionary, and he said, Brother, you can't take that, the gospel, to a wrong address. Everybody needs it. That includes here in Wallingford, too, by the way. Yes, he said, Brother, you can't go anywhere. So then I called several others, and everybody said, Brother, we need help. We need help. I never contacted one missionary that said, We got this. We don't need help. So then I seen that there was need all over for missionaries that was already out there. And then I called one more missionary. I called several, but the last one I called, he said, Brother, I want to encourage you. Don't listen to me. Listen to God. Whatever God's telling you to do, whatever he's laying on your heart, listen to him way more than you listen to me. And then that is when, shortly after, God gave us clarity for the country of Switzerland. So would you pray? Would you pray that God gives you clarity and direction on what he has in your life? Would you pray that we can get to the field of Switzerland quickly so we can share Jesus with them? Once again, church, thank you so much for having us. Thank you so much for loving us. Thank you so much for everything you've done for us. Uh, we are absolutely humbled to be here. And uh, after this, I believe we're taking pictures? Yes, sir, I think so. Yep, we'll be taking pictures out there, and we're going to sneak the Alphorn out, and you can take a picture with the Alphorn. Um, so uh, we might even let you play it. But thank you so much, guys. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Amen. Let's all stand as we grab our songbook again. And turn to page number 124, Set My Soul Afire. Amen. Page 124, sing it out with me on the first verse. 
Set my soul afire, Lord, for thy holy word. Burn it deep within me, let your voice be heard. Millions grope in darkness in this day and hour. I will be your witness, fill me with thy power. Set my soul afire, Lord, set my soul afire. Make my life a witness of thy saving power. Millions grope in darkness, waiting for thy word. Set my soul afire, Lord, set my soul afire. Set my soul afire, Lord, for the lost in sin. Give to me a passion as I seek to win. Help me not to falter, never let me fail. Fill me with thy spirit, let thy will prevail. Set my soul afire, Lord, set my soul afire. Make my life a witness of thy saving power. Millions grope in darkness, waiting for thy word. Set my soul afire, Lord, set my soul afire. On the last, set my soul afire, Lord, in my daily life. Far too long I've wandered in this day of strife. Nothing else will matter but to live for Thee. I will be Your witness as You live in me. Set my soul afire, Lord, set my soul afire. Make my life a witness of thy saving power. Millions grope in darkness, waiting for thy word. Set my soul afire, Lord, set my soul afire. You may be seated. Thank you, Brother Deaton. I appreciate you uh, sharing your burden about Switzerland, and we'll certainly be much in prayer for you. Uh, our offering tonight, everything is going to go to our missionaries. Uh, they will most of them be with us through Sunday evening, and we want to take care of them. Uh, they travel thousands upon thousands of miles uh, a year, uh, wear and tear on vehicles, and yet they still, some of them still maintaining a home somewhere, uh, and so forth. So we want to be a blessing to them. And by the way, you. You take care of missionaries, you'll find that God takes care of you. Uh, Philippians 4.19 is all about that. Uh, if you've got your faith promise card and you already know what the Lord would have you to do, you can drop that in the offering plate uh, tonight, or if you'd like, you can wait till Sunday for that. Uh, we'll give an opportunity at, towards the end of the service. Anybody needs a, a card? But I hope you'll be praying about what God would have you to do as far as your giving in the coming year towards our, our missions program. Uh, we have some 74 families scattered around the world right now that are serving Christ on a mission field. Uh, the number above the door, 598,000, 
356. That is the number of people that our missionaries have reported that have trusted Christ as Savior in the past 21 years since I started keeping those records. Uh, these are great servants of the Lord. But uh, we've got four families with us right now. But you, uh, you ought to see the stack of questionnaires and missionary requests we have coming in on a weekly basis. Uh, preacher, we're, we're headed to such and such a country as a missionary. Do you think you could have us in for a meeting? Uh, and I'm glad for that. I'm glad that there are people answering the call. And I realize we can't support everybody, but we ought to have a heart that says, let's support as many as we can. So I hope you'll pray about what God would have you to do, and uh, then you follow the Lord with that. Brother Stewart, if you would come and pray for tonight's offering, please. Heavenly Father, we have been praying and fasting for these meetings. And as the song said, I pray, Father, that you would set our soul afire. And give us a burden, Father, again for the saving of souls, Father, for the preaching of the word. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for <clears throat> those that have come to share their burdens with us. And if at all possible, Father, help us to be able to support them. And thank you for Brother Morrison. I pray you continue to fill him with your spirit and give him exactly what we need. That message last night was a great foundation for this conference. I pray now, Lord, you would bless and use this offering uh, to be a blessing to them in Jesus' name. Ask our special music if they want to make their way to the platform. Uh, we're looking forward to the message from Dr. Robbie Morrison. For most of us, he needs no introduction. He hails from the great state of West Virginia, whose motto is almost heaven. Am I right? Yes. Almost heaven. That's because it borders Pennsylvania. That's, that's why they have that. He's been a pastor. He's been a missionary with the Rock of Ages prison ministry. Uh, he heads the All Points Baptist Missions. He's traveled the world. Uh, he's got an understanding and a heart for missions uh, that is uh, uh, rivaled and equaled by very, very few people. And we always count it a privilege when he uh, agrees to come and be a part of our missions conference. So, Brother Morrison, thank you for coming to be at our church. We'll have our uh, special, and then, Brother Morrison, you come preach. found sometimes the journey will get hard. I've had moments where I felt like I was falling apart. I've had my days of pain. I've cried my share of tears. But Lord, I've not found a time you were in some I found you are faithful, I found you are great, I found you are worthy of all my praise. I found you are present, I found you are true. I'm amazed at all I found. Sometimes that life does not make sense. 
sense and there's no way to know what I will face next when I think of all you've done and how good you have been I know I'll find you faithful all over again I found you are faithful I found you are great I found you are worthy of all my praise I found you are present I found you are true at all I found in you faithful in the storm faithful through the night how could I doubt you when time after time I found you are faithful I found you are great, I found you are worthy of all my praise. I found you are present, I found you are true. I'm amazed, cause I found you faithful, I found you are great. I found you are worthy of all my praise. I found you are present. I found you are true. I'm amazed at all I found in you. I'm amazed at all I found. Take your Bibles, find if you would, First Thessalonians. Is this thing not on? Should be. Yes, it is. Amen. First Thessalonians, if you'll find that, uh, chapter number two. We'll get there in just a moment. Uh, when you do what <clears throat> I do every, almost every week of your life, you get to a church and you get to meet people. You associate that church with people. Coming here wouldn't be right if the Gerbers weren't sitting there, amen? And we're missing the Reamers. We miss, they were always right there, the next chair up, you know? And of course, on the, first, the first time I came, I got to meet Brother Held. Now, there was an instant connection because for years he was in Canton, Ohio. And if you knew the story, one of Brother Held's converts in those years in Canton, Ohio, was a guy named Stan Nicely. And for 30-some years, Stan Nicely started and pastored the Grace Baptist Church in Bridgeport, West Virginia, who who's, was a friend of ours when I pastored and, and supported us for, and still support us for over 30 years. And they've been supporting our ministry, and it became that tie. And, you know, folks, it's, it's exciting when God's moving in churches and we understand Brother Held's in a better place, amen. But also, it's just like, it's, he should be sitting back about there, amen, and where he always pretty much said. And so, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for being with us in the service. We appreciate, we, we love coming here, and we love coming to be around you folks, get to renew that fellowship with the folks we knew before and get to meet some new folks, amen. And so we're excited to be here this week. I asked you to pray last night for Chris and Carol Shaw. If you'll really pray through the night, it would be at 7 o'clock in the morning our time. It would be 11 o'clock their time in Greenland. They will be meeting with the doctors 
to get the final diagnosis and what the, the treatment plan will be as they proceed ahead. So I'd appreciate you if you would continue to pray for them and the Lord to give them grace, give the doctors wisdom. God wants to heal it, you know, but he has a plan. Amen? When we get in those situations, people say to me, what do you think? I said, I know this. God has a plan, number one. Number two, I know I'm not God. Amen? And so his plan's not always mine or yours, amen, but it's always right. And so appreciate your prayers. And then in the morning, I've got a, a meeting for a few minutes, and then I need to finalize some paperwork. The ministry of all points, it's interesting what God has done. And, of course, the mission has always been, the missionary part of it's always been the emphasis. And then God brought the chaplaincy part, and we'll tell you a little bit more about that through the rest of the week. And, and then... As things progressed, the heirloom seed project came, and men were excited about that, and I'll give you a little update on that later in the week. And then uh, about two years ago, a pastor friend of mine called me. He said, Brother Morrison, i got a young man in my church that needs help. Can you help us? And he had a desire to be a hospital chaplain. I said, well, you know, what, what can we do? And he said, well, they found out investigating things that your larger hospitals, if they're going to employ a man to be a chaplain, they're now requiring that man to be endorsed in the similar way that a military chaplain would be. So somebody that he could be part of that basically is saying to that hospital and to that group, this man is qualified to practice our faith. And so, knowing the pastor like we do, know, I've known this young man since he was a teenager and said, yeah, we'll get involved. And so, tomorrow morning, we'll fill out the final piece of paperwork and come June, he will be a certified hospital chaplain. He's been through master's degree program. He's been through four units of CPE training, clinical pastoral educational training, and he's training right now at a hospital in Springfield, Missouri. And so we're excited about that and what God's going to do. And it's starting to open the door. I'm getting calls now from people that want to be police chaplains, chaplains and EMTs and firehouses. And they're, they're realizing that, you know, a lot of kooks show up and want to be the chaplain. Somebody say amen. And so they, we just can't let everybody do that. So now they're saying, could you, as an endorsing agent, see, they realize if the military and the government thinks you're all right, I guess, we must be all right, amen? And so we pray for that part of it. He's a great young man, his family, and I believe God's going to use him in the days and weeks ahead, amen? First uh, Thessalonians chapter number 2. Let's get to First Thessalonians chapter number 2. I'm kind of in enthralled with this thought of giving for eternity, giving with eternity in view. Last night we talked about revelation and the, the bounty that will be and the, the multitude of souls. That's eternity, amen? Those, everybody from every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. And so I'm praying last night and reading and studying a little bit this morning and God said, well, now how do we get them there? What is the process to get to Revelation chapter number 3? Or chapter number 5, I'm sorry. What is that process? Well, I'm reading scripture, and if you just read this for a moment, you, you'll think, well, that, that really doesn't do what I think. But just hang on. You get to chapter 2 of 1 Thessalonians, and, he, and down at the end of the chapter, Paul says this in verse number 18. He said, wherefore we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming. And then he said this, for ye are our glory and joy. Now, 
You say, preacher, what is he saying there? Begin to think about the picture. Paul's writing to this church at Thessalonica. Go, go back to chapter number one and notice what he says. And, and I love this as you begin to lead back to chapter two. Verse number five of chapter one, he said, For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance as we know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. So you got to understand, Paul said, this gospel came to you, and the end result of that gospel coming to them, Paul's writing back to them all these years later, and those people that had gotten saved, those people that gave their life to Christ, he said, let me tell you something. What is our joy? What is our hope? What is our crown of rejoicing? And then he stops and he says this, Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? So he stops and he says, You're the reason we do this. And he's anticipating the day that the Lord Jesus Christ would come back and the dead in Christ shall rise. Amen. And us that are alive and remain, he, ta- he tells them later, shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And he says that moment when all these people are gathered together and we look around, he said, what is my joy? What is my hope? What is my crown of rejoicing? What moves us? He said, the fact of knowing in that moment you're going to be in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ at his coming. Can I tell you folks that God puts them in all kinds of places? I, I was I was preaching in New Philadelphia, Ohio uh, back last June and and uh, we, we got done with the morning service and was going to meet the pastor for lunch and he, he said he, he said, I'll be there in just a minute and I said, well, I got to go put gas in my car and I said, he said, okay, meet me at the house. And so I went into the Sheets gas station to put gas in my vehicle. Now, I was driving my mother-in-law's car, pray for me, amen. And, and, and so uh, I, or the gas tank on that car is on that passenger side. So I pulled into the pump on that side so that the gas could be put in. And as I pulled in, there was a man and his wife sitting there leaning against the back of a, uh, one of those three-wheeled motorcycles. They called a slingshot. Two wheels in the front, one in the back, and they're leaning against the back of that. And it was Sunday morning, just got out of church, you know. So I get out of my car. I'm dressed like this, and the guy looked at me and said, Hey, did you go to church today? Now, that's a, quite a, you know, announcement in the middle of a gas, sheets gas station. I said, Yeah. He goes, What happens to you when you die? I'm like, What? He said, look, I was driving down Interstate 77 just a few miles up the road. Some guy cut us off in this little three-wheel motorcycle. He said, I had to swerve to miss him. The front wheel of this thing came off the road. I thought you were going to die. What happens to you when you die? I said, well, okay. I took my Bible out of my car, went and walked over there, laid on the back of that three-wheel motorcycle. Ten minutes later, led that man and his wife to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, now listen, they're from Michigan. I got to talk to them. I said, where are you from? Michigan, what town? He told me. I said, listen, I know a guy's got a church in that town. He said, give me the number. And so I gave it to him. And a few weeks later, I get this phone call from this preacher I know. He said, I had two motorcycle people show up in my church. You know anything about it? Amen. Hey, folks, listen, they're there. Now, I may never ever see those two people ever again in this physical life, but what is my hope? What is the crown of rejoicing that at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, we will see them there, amen? That's the exciting part of this. But how did that happen that Paul's talking about? Back up to Acts chapter number 16. Go to Acts chapter 16. So we see the end product 
of what we want, and that is these people that will be saved. I'm excited. I, 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 the Lord tarries is coming, you know. Wouldn't it be, it's going to be exciting to see the people that are going to be there from India, the people are going to be there from, uh, from Iceland, the people are going to be there from Switzerland, the people are going to be there from Brazil, the people are going to be there from the prisons of this, um, of this country that we live in. People are going to be there from all over this world. But how does that transpire? Now, you get to Acts chapter 16. Now, walk, we're going to walk through some scripture for a minute because you got to understand something. You get to Acts chapter number 16 and it's an interesting verse, verse 5, and it said, so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. And that's what they're talking about, the ministry of Paul and he met Timothy and, and he went through all those cities in verse number 4 and they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep and that they were ordained of apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem and so were the churches established in faith and increased in number daily. Now when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the regions of Galatia and under you young people especially underline some phrases right now and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Evidently, Paul wanted to go to Asia. But the Holy Spirit said no. Then read the next verse. He said, and, after, and they were come to Messiah, and they essayed to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. And then what happens? And they, and they passing by Messiah came down to Torres and a vision appeared to Paul in the night and there stood a man of Macedonia and prayed to him saying, come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, surely gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Let me just run, run rabbit trail, trail, trail. I can't even talk tonight, amen. Let me run, run rabbit trail. A problem with a lot of young people and even adults, we want to decide what we want to do for God and then ask God to come bless it. Instead of letting the Spirit of God put us where he wants us to go. The Spirit said you can't go into Asia. The, the Spirit wouldn't let him go into that city. Now he says he has the Macedonian vision. Here's the Macedonian call. Now he knows this is where God wants them to be. Some people say, well, how do you know? If you're spiritual, if you got enough of God in your life, you'll know when the Spirit of God's speaking to you. Amen. Amen. And it won't be that you ate too much pizza and then went to sleep. Amen. And you will know. That brings up the problem, see. We have such shallow spirituality in many people that their emotions drive them and not the Spirit of God. I, a young man came to me one day and said, I believe you want to be a missionary. I said, tell me about your personal life with God. I know where I'm going. Just hang on a minute. He said, I said, tell me about your personal life with God. He said, well, I get up every morning, and I read a page in the Baptist bread. I read one in the daily bread, and I'm good to go. I said, really? I said, this Bible right here, have you ever read it from Genesis to Revelation? Graduate of a Bible college. He looks at me and said, is that important? Ah, uh, yeah. Paul didn't say, go read the daily bread. He didn't tell Timothy to read the Baptist bread. He said, Timothy, study to show that self-approved unto God. Timothy, preach the word. He said, what should I do? I said, go home, read this Bible. When you're done, call me. He ain't called back. But I think God wants me to do this. How do you know? The Spirit of God. So what happens? Paul follows. Smile at me. Some of you just about swallowed your tongue right there. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of this stuff. Just when the Spirit of God doesn't lead you, then when you get over there and all the glory of being a missionary and all the excitement of living in a foreign country and everybody's not handing you everything you want now, you got to buckle down and serve God. You better know the Spirit of God put you there. 
That's why 50% of them that finish deputation and go to the mission field either never finish the first term or after the first term come home and never go back. Why? Because it wasn't the spirit leading of God. Huh? All of a sudden, the spirit led them home. That's amazing to me. Huh? And so Paul ends up following the Spirit of God, where does he end up to? i got a point to this. Hang on, amen. If you don't like this, it's my wife's fault because she said, slow down, honey. And I said, okay. And, and so what's he say? And so what happens? They go into Philippi, and you know what happens in Philippi. The Lord shows up. The Philippian jailer gets saved. All of his family gets saved. Lydia's there. The church gets, a start, gets started, and God does great things, amen. Then you get to chapter 17, and watch what happens. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, and then and they came to what? Huh. Where was the synagogue of the Jews? And Paul, as the manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas, and of the devout Greeks a great multitude, and of the chief women not a few. And all of a sudden, God, he goes to Philippi, he leaves Philippi, goes over into Thessalonica that's the second place he went to when he left Philippi he went to Thessalonica and there in Thessalonica preached the word of God multitudes, multitudes, people were getting saved, amen now you say but why is that so important go back to Philippians chapter number 4, go over to Philippians chapter number 4, now he's writing to the church at Philippi and in Philippians chapter 4 he if you, if you don't connect scripture, you don't, you don't get the understanding of it. So you get to Philippians chapter 4. And he's writing to these people that he preached to. And he says in verse number 15, Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only... And watch verse number 16. For even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again unto my necessity. Not because I desire fruit, I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. So what happened? Paul goes out in Acts chapter 16, has the Macedonian vision, here's the Macedonian call, goes over into uh, the Philippi, preaches, the church at Philippi gets started. He leaves that group of people. The first place he goes to is Thessalonica. Now he's writing back all these years ago, uh, years later, it, it, to the church in, Phil, in, in Philippi, and he said, you Philippians, know also when I departed at the beginning of the gospel when I departed no church communicated unto me in giving hello and receiving but ye only and then he reiterated it a little deeper and he said for you sent once and again unto my necessity where in Thessalonica now, you go back to 1 Thessalonians, he's writing to that church in Thessalonia and the Thessalonians, and he said, ye are my hope, you're my joy, you're my crown of rejoicing. But in the presence of the Lord, there's that fruit that abounds to the account of the people of Philippi and the Philippian church because they're the ones that gave and Paul went and he sent once and again unto their necessity and because of their giving, Paul went and those people got saved and now you see the fruit that abounds in heaven. Hello? Isn't it so simple but yet profound? Now, there's a verse you got to get with all this. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter number 1. I almost waited to do this Sunday morning, but I, I may go back and do it again, amen. But, but notice this. You said we're giving for, with eternity in view. Yet Paul's saying, 
You're my crown of rejoicing. That's eternity in view. When the Lord Jesus Christ gets us out of here, we're getting ready to start eternity, future, amen? And in that time, there's going to be a, a multitude of souls in the presence of the Lord as his coming. And will there be some there because of you? The church at Philippi could actually trace what Paul was saying in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 back to their giving of Philippians chapter 4. And Paul was actually giving them credit for in Philippians chapter 4 because you gave, he said, and you sent once and again unto my necessity when I was in Thessalonica. Now those people that are going to be in the presence of the Lord from Thessalonica is fruit. He said, not because I desire to give, but fruit that abounds to your account? Huh? See the process? So then Paul writing to the church at Corinth tells them about it. Because he said, verse 11 of 2 Corinthians chapter 1, Ye also helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many what, he said, on our behalf. So what's Paul saying in that verse of Scripture? He said, you helped us. Not just by your prayer. Your prayer helped. But he said, because of the gift. Hello? Giving. The gift bestowed upon us, he said, by the means of many persons. I know I've said it here before, but I'm going back and remind you. Missions is a great and wonderful thing. And aren't you glad that God didn't expect you to do it all by yourself? Amen. And you think about these, these missionaries. You're going to have to have 70 to 100 supporting churches. I'd say Mike, Brother Michael and Brother, uh, Brother Deaton are going to have to have about 100 to get where they're going because of the cost of what they're going to have to spend there. I was talking to Nathan, his cousin, the other day. When they when they started deputation, housing was going to be what three thousand, thirty five hundred. Now it's over four grand, right? The the eruption of the volcano is called a housing shortage. Hello. So the cost of it's going up. You pay four thousand dollars just for a place to live, and you're not even fed this crowd. You you seen these boys eat? They got hollow legs. I don't, I don't know. They go through Chick-fil-A and have to mortgage their van. Huh? And they get there. So they have to have, a, let's say, 100 supporting churches. And God sends them around this country to list the help of churches. So 100 churches the size of this one, let's say 150 people, that's easy for my hillbilly mind. So 15,000 people pull their resources, hello, by the means of many persons. But catch that last phrase in that verse. He said that thanks may be given by many, Paul said, on our behalf. When Chris Deaton gets to Switzerland and the first person gets saved, they're not going to thank God for Heritage Baptist Church in Wallingford, Connecticut. They're going to thank God for the deliverer of the gospel. That's exactly what Paul was saying in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. My joy, my crown of rejoicing is you when I get to heaven. But he can go back to Philippians and say, you gave, there's fruit that abounds to your account. And God ties the circle. God ties the circle. So when you fill out this faith promise card, you're giving in view of eternity. The souls that will be in heaven called out of here at the rapture of the church, some of us, huh? It kind of quiet, didn't it? 
see, our American philosophy, and I'm about done, our American philosophy and thinking is we want personal gratification for everything we do. Amen? There's people that won't sing because they sang one time and nobody said amen or nobody came to them after and said, that was really good. Nobody appreciated it. I was in a church one time preaching, and before the service started, this lady comes in with this pretty bouquet of flowers. She came over and set them on the communion table in the front of the church, and they were beautiful. And, and she said, Preacher, she said, I just had these flowers in my garden. I just thought it would be a, a blessing. And, and don't tell anybody who did this. I just wanted to be a blessing to the church. I thought, what a wonderful lady to after church. And after church, she comes by. We're staying at the back door, shaking hands. She said, Preach, I just want you to know I'm not coming back. He said, What's wrong? She said, Not one person said a word about them flowers. That's the way a lot of us function. Huh? And Paul said, They're not going to thank you, they're going to thank the missionary. But when you get to heaven and somebody's standing there around the throne of God, where are you from? I'm from Iceland. Where are you from? I'm from Brazil. A guy named Minion came to my village in Brazil and I got saved. And you're standing there going, yeah, yeah. And the missionary, I think, will turn around and say, and that's fruit that abounds to your account. I didn't come here looking for the gift. Now, let's be honest. Without the gift, we can't do it. Amen? But most missionaries I know, if you understand their heart, it's not about the gift. It's about the fruit. But the fruit can't abound without the gift. So it's easy. It's amazing how Scripture all ties together, isn't it? When you just walk, walk through Scripture and the, Paul's writing to those Thessalonians saying, look, I'm excited you're going to be there. Huh? First trip I made to the Philippine Islands, I made, maybe it was the second one, we, t we took 32 men. You ever want to have fun, take 32 preachers on a trip. 32 independent Baptist preachers on a trip. And we're all on this flight leaving out of Detroit, headed over to the Philippine Islands. And so we're spread all through this airplane, 32 of us. And so I'm setting up towards the front and trying to keep an eye on stuff, you know. And I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, in the back, I hear this voice going, Woo! I thought I recognized that voice. I thought, I better see what's going on. I walked back there, and there sat Bob Harrison, the guy that pastored in West Virginia. He, and there's three seats on that row he was sitting on. He's sitting on the aisle. This young lady and this young man sitting on the next two seats, and they're just wiping tears. And I said, everything all right? He said, oh, yeah, these two are on their honeymoon. They just got married, and they just got born again. I went, okay, so we went back up and sit down. We're cruising along. It's a 14-hour flight, you know, so we're cruising along, and all of a sudden I heard, well, glory to God. I thought, oh, Lord, here we go. I didn't recognize that voice. Went back. There's another guy that led somebody to the Lord. That happened all the way to the Philippines. Huh? It's fruit that abounds to somebody's account. Because you give in view of eternity. We give too much in view of now. I'm going to bust a little of your theology and I'm done. We do not, you listen to me, we do not give to get from God. Well, preacher, if I give, God's going, it says so and you shall reap. Yes, I know that. But you don't 
give with the whole thought and the only thinking that I'm going to get back something from God for my giving. You give in view of eternity. You give with the fact that souls are going to be in heaven and people's lives are going to be changed and people are going to be there because of what you did to send the missionary there, the preacher there, to give him the gospel of Jesus Christ. And God's going to bless you because of it, but you don't give to get from God. You give with eternity in view. Huh? James addresses that in the book of James chapter 5 when he, he, he's talking about their giving. And he said, be patient therefore unto the coming of the Lord. For the husband waited for the precious fruit of the earth. Huh? What is the precious fruit? The souls of men and women. So when I came to 1 Thessalonians, I thought, that's, that's eternity. But they got it because Paul went, and Paul went because the church at Philippi gave. And that's the whole cycle of missions. That's the whole cycle of missions and missions giving. Huh? And that's how it works. That's how God does it. Amen. So the question is, are you involved? Are you involved? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. Help us tonight, Father. Just to understand your plan. There's going to be some people in heaven from all over this world. And they're there because the missionary the preacher brought the gospel of Jesus Christ to them. Just like Paul did to the Thessalonians. But Paul could have never taken the gospel to the Thessalonians unless when he left Philippi, the church at Philippi communicated to him in giving and receiving. Once and again, over and over, they sent to Paul Lord, may we learn to just be involved in the simple process of getting the gospel to the world. And we'll thank you and praise you for it. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. They're going to play a verse of invitation. God spoke to your heart. You need to come today. Would you? Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Let's use the altar tonight. Let's ask God to help us be part of something that's bigger than ourselves. Something that's forever. Something that's forever. You may still be praying about your faith promise. Why don't you come to the altar and just say, Lord, show me what I'm supposed to do. Holy Spirit, lead me. It might be as you're sitting here that it's more than just giving X number of dollars a week or a month, whatever. It might be that God wants you to go somewhere. And now that might mean changing your plans, giving up what you thought you were going to do with your life to follow what God wants, but you won't be sorry about that. Giving in light of eternity. Folks pray around the room. We'll tarry a moment or so. Father, thank you for that which we have seen and heard tonight. 
Lord, not long ago in this auditorium, we did a Bible study about that church at Philippi and other churches in Macedonia. We know that it was a, it was a poor church. The Bible says deep poverty. It was a persecuted church. But it was a church that invested in eternity. And there on the pages of eternal scripture is their testimony written for everyone to read and study and an example for us to follow. And Lord, I pray that we would follow in those faithful footsteps, that you'd allow us to grow in grace, to give by faith. And Father, we pray that you will bless what happens. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Would you be seated just for a moment, uh, please? Is there anybody here uh, who did not get uh, one of the... Uh, Faith Promise cards this past Sunday, uh, and you need one. If so, just raise your hand. Is there anybody like that? We got a couple over here, Brother Stewart, a couple back here, one over here. Just keep them up. The ushers will come by and give you one. Um, out on the Lord's Supper table and also out in the lobby on the information desk, there are some invitations for Easter Sunday. That is a week from this Sunday. It's early this year. Uh, so grab some and start passing those out to neighbors, friends, co-workers, classmates, and so forth. Uh, and uh, take as many as you, you want. We'll just keep printing more of those, and let's be busy inviting folks to come out. Uh, tomorrow morning, 8.15, there is chapel here at Heritage Baptist Academy. Our missionaries will be uh, speaking to our students, and you're certainly invited to come be a part of it. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, uh, we'll be back in here uh, for round three. And uh, we're looking forward to it. I, I see, I believe, Brother Franks, you're on for tomorrow night with Rock of Ages Prison Ministry. We hope you'll come. Saturday evening is our international banquet. Whether you've signed up or not, we invite you to come be a part of it. Uh, we'll, we'll tear this place down, have tables set up from uh, one end of the room to the other. Uh, enjoy some fellowship together. Uh, and uh, question and answer time with our missionaries. Brother Morrison will preach uh, for us. Uh, we're going to start eating at 5.30 on Saturday. So you want to come in early enough to get your food put out on the table, find a place for you and your family. I will give you a hint. Um, the tables that have a, one of our missionary families, they always go through the food line first. So you might want to just be there uh, and, and uh, come early so you can sit with one of those. Right after the service tonight, Brother Deaton, if you and your family would head out into the lobby, I would encourage you to come and get a picture taken with the missionary. Uh, Brother Carson, are you in here? He's somewhere around. I think he'll be taking pictures. Um, and I, I would encourage you to do that. We'll make sure you get a copy of that. It'd be a wonderful thing to have up in your refrigerator for your kids to see, uh, saying, remember the missionary the, that's going to Switzerland, the Deans? Remember, we got a picture. Your kids get to pray with them, get to know them, uh, and so forth. So I hope you'll uh, take advantage of that opportunity uh, for something different this year. Uh, right after we, we dismiss here, if you could help us, uh, we need to gather the songbooks up. Uh, we have chapel tomorrow, so we're going to get the songbooks out of the way for our students. And uh, let me see, Brother Rob, is there anything else? Uh, I don't see Brother, he, Brother Carson hasn't stepped in yet. I think that's all the announcements. Thank you, Brother Morrison. Thank you for a great truth, a great message for us. Can we stand together? Appreciate you coming out. This has been a good week already, and we're only halfway done. Father, Father, help us to leave tonight and think about what we've seen and heard. Lord, the, uh, the Deatons are needed in Switzerland. Father, it's a country with eight, eight and a half or almost nine million people and very little gospel witness. Yet those are people that Christ died for. And Father, you have laid it upon the heart of this good family to pick up their roots and leave everything behind and go there to share Christ. Father, would you burden us about being a part of that? Father, I pray that you would help us not just to think about people that need to be saved in Switzerland, but people that need to be saved in Wallingford. One of our students got saved today. We're thankful for that, but we might have a co-worker that needs to hear about Christ. We might have somebody across the street from us that needs to hear. Help us to be busy and faithful of sharing the gospel. Dismiss us with your blessing. Keep us safe as we go home tonight. Help us rest 
well tonight, and we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And you are dismissed.